you're listening to Hainai by Motsi Dapul. Remind me to tell you later. Madre. So, I've known about the supernatural for a long time. I grew up with it. My nana and Lola raised me in it, taught me how to identify and deal with the things that go bump in the night. But, I was also a kid. And as most kids would be, even knowing everything I knew, the supernatural terrified me. And why wouldn't it? It wasn't safe. And I knew that every day of my life. I went to Catholic school because, of course I did, an all-girls Catholic school with the long skirts and the ugliest blouses you've ever seen, where the founders were all nuns and the administration always seemed surprised a bunch of us grew up wanting to make out with other girls under the bleachers. Speaking of nuns, and that that other part, I think I was in fourth or fifth grade at the time. I had these adorable little bangs, and I never smiled in pictures because I worried it would make me look fat. I just got my period, hormones were running wild, and I had my crushes. The big one was, oh, Donner, you've met her before, Ira Mangalingan. She was a bit of an emo kid, and I thought she was the coolest girl in class. Nowadays, I blackmail her with pictures of her braces, but when you're in love and also, like, ten, none of the awkward stuff really matters. The reason I bring up childhood crush and erstwhile ex Ira is that she had to do with a nun incident I experienced back in grade school. To this day, it's only one of many traumatic experiences at the creepy old Catholic school that was a World War II hospital that really shook me. I saw a lot. We used to call it having my third eye open or something, and back then I wasn't as used to seeing things the way I am now. I'd see, say, uh, Santo Nino, a child Jesus statue in the chapel moving its hands, or the ghostly faces of dead girls in old, yellowing class photos. One time, when I had to stay after school from a mild fever, I saw an old priest walking slowly toward me at the end of a long hallway, his head tucked under his arm. But, for the most part, I knew they couldn't hurt me. That didn't stop the nightmares, but I was safe as I could be, at least, according to my nana. As long as I kept my anting anting with me, she said. She explained it like a mosquito net. You could see through them, but they kept things out when they needed to. A veil that separates the living and the dead. One that could thin, but hardly ever broke. And because of my experiences with her and Lola, I could see through that veil better than most, but I was no less safe from anything but a good scare. Knowing that, I, the young child I was, both frightened and thrilled by my sight, told stories. In fairness, I wasn't the only one telling stories. Everyone did. Everyone had a story, and my job was to confirm if they were true. The girls in my class and out of it would ask me to confirm the stories. Three or four girls holding onto each other by the shoulders while I entered a room with an aura or an image and say I could see or feel something. More often than not, I did. I was a weirdo, but I was a useful weirdo. So I got a reputation for being the one to ask when something creepy was going on around the school. More often than not, I was asked to accompany some girls to bathrooms. It's less creepy than it sounds. Well, I mean, it was a different kind of creepy, I guess. The ghostly kind, rather than the, um, adolescent girl kind. I was once asked by one of the most popular tomboys in school to watch out for her while she visited the grade school shower room, which was, and I kid you not, one of the creepiest rooms in the entire school, whether you believed in ghosts or not. 
The individual shower cubicles were lined up in one narrow row all the way up to the far wall, with these old lights flickering overhead. At the very end of the row, the last cubicle had an old door hanging off one hinge, and a light that seemed like it would never be repaired. It stayed dark for long stretches, but every now and then, it would flicker to life, then back to darkness. It was also the only place the grade school kids could shower after varsity practice, if they couldn't go home right after, or take the long trek up to the high school showers. I lied about what was in that particular bathroom. When the popular girl, Kat, I think her name was, asked about it. She insisted she felt something brush against her head when she was drying off. I told her that I couldn't see anything, which was a good sign, since it meant whatever ghosts were hanging around were harmless, if any at all. <clears throat> hanging around. Let's just say this ghost was much less harmful than the one Laura and I encountered at the Christie house, but no less terrifying to see in the bathroom mirror, passing her hand over the heads and shoulders of other schoolgirls. When she saw me looking at her, hanging by her neck from the ceiling and gliding around the room, she reached out and brushed her fingers against the bangs on my face, but otherwise seemed inert. That was my experience for most of these ghosts in our haunted school. Terrifying, but calm. Peaceful, even. And then... There was the nun. You're listening to Hainai by Motsi Dapul. Hey everyone, Motsi here, and thank you for listening to our five-minute excerpt of Remind Me to Tell You Later, Madre, which is a patron-exclusive episode about Mary's experience with the ghost of a nun in her haunted Catholic elementary school. This is not the first Remind Me to Tell You Later episode, with previous titles like Chanak and Tik Tik being available to all listeners, but it's the first patron-exclusive episode, which is a reward for our ate tier on Patreon. This episode, along with other bonus content such as bonus audio, videos, and art, will be accessible if you support our work on patreon.com slash hainaipod. You can also get limited access to some of our bonus content as a reward for making a one-time donation on our coffee. ko-fi.com slash hainaipod. Another way to support our podcast is by subscribing to our YouTube channel youtube.com slash hainaipod, and getting us to 1k subs. We're aiming to get to 1k before the end of 2022, and you can chat with the creators and other fans during our live premieres every last Sunday of the month. Finally, it would be amazing if you could all join us for our People Power live stream on Feb 25, 9pm PHT, or Philippine time, and 8am EST, Toronto, New York time. We'll be doing a live commentary on our episode, Nakaraan, telling horror stories both fictional and unfortunately real and historical about the Philippines' martial law era. You can watch the live stream on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash hainaipod, or on our Twitch, twitch.tv slash hainaipod, and join the chat while we hang out. We know that was a lot of information, so we've basically written this entire announcement down in the description so you can review. But in summary, subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash hainaipod, support us at patreon.com slash hainaipod, or donate to our coffee ko-fi.com slash hainaipod, for bonus content. Join us for our Feb 25 livestream on the hainaipod YouTube or Twitch. Follow our socials at hainaipod on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and Facebook for more info. That's H-I-N-A-Y-P-O-D. And as always, thank you, we love you, Paalam goodbye.